he would not be seen with that. So I asked permission that he could just come around, my lady, stand there when I point out certain things that we have reality in this. And it's so important for our case and whatever may follow in this case, my lady. So I asked the court's permission. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> and, and I'm told he's very embarrassed, but he, he understands that it's important to do that. He's very, very embarrassed and ashamed. But it's time. You could just take it to the next one. You can maybe just stand on my side where I can see him and then talk to him. about the findings and, and great respect for the Appeal Court of Appeals finding. I, I absolutely respect it. But we're dealing with sentence. We have to see rationality now in the context of sentence. And what we have, and these facts can be tested. Just hold on to them. These are the distilled facts that can be tested. Let's look at who is the person. After in incorporating the Supreme Court of Appeals finding that you must sentence today, or Friday, or whatever day, this is the person. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's dark. He's on his stumps. That's all common cause. Not on his legs. He's not running around the track. He suffers from an anxiety disorder. <laughs> We know that the uncontested evidence was that when he was on his stumps, his balance was seriously compromised. And without anything, he would not be able to defend himself. He was anxious. He was frightened. That frightened finding is not gone. And he was suffering from an anxiety disorder. That's not gone. This must all be seen in the context of his disability and the pervasive effect of the disability on his subjective thinking. He proceeded to the entrance of the bathroom because of his excessive fight response and his inability to run away. My lady, all these facts are factual findings, not disturbed, and where the Supreme Court of Appeal made different findings, we included them here. He was armed with a heavy caliber firearm ready to fire. His perception that he, he and the deceased were in danger was fortified by the following. The open bathroom window, which explained the noise he had heard. So it's not that he, there was nothing. Of course there was. It's factual findings. The fact that there were ladders outside his house, as his house was being painted at the time, which would have facilitated access to the bathroom. He had heard the slamming of a door and subsequently saw that the toilet door was in fact closed. He believed that the person in the toilet was an intruder and that the deceased was at the time in the bedroom. He fired four shots into the toilet door with a downward trajectory, thereby not aiming at chest height. Although he may have been anxious and although frightened, his belief that he was entitled to fire was not rational and therefore not genuine. And that's where I stop when I look at him and I think, how rational can it be, my lady? And if he may go back. I see that it's stressful for him if he may go back. And, 
and that's the point, and that's, that's the Ferreira's case where I'm at, my lady, where we get to this point. Although he may have been anxious and although frightened, his belief that he was entitled to fire was not rational. For purpose of conviction, I accept that, my lady. I accept that. That's the Supreme Court's appeal finding. That's fine. It's on law principles. But what are we dealing with when we look at that rationality? We're dealing with a person that's not like me. It's not like her, it's not like her. It's a person with, I don't want to overplay vulnerability. That's not what I want to do. I don't want to overplay disability, but the time has come that we must just look at different eyes, at least at, with unbiased eyes. It doesn't mean because he's vulnerable that he can do what he likes. That's not what we're saying. But we're saying we're entering the field of sentencing. Look at that man's conduct. Was his fear rational? No, it was found not to be rational. Meaning that he was entitled to shoot? No. That's why he's convicted of Donus and Vincholas. But please, let's understand. Let's understand when you combine these factors. You can't look at each one in isolation. Put them in one box and see who is this man that you must sentence. It's not the man running with evil on two healthy legs, wanting to protect his girlfriend and running to the bathroom to kill. That's not what it was. 